Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today I want to attend some projects. I have some plants which I want to put outside. Well, orchids, not just any type of plant. The problem is they're taking up a little bit too much space on the shelf because their pattern of growth is actually not very tidy. They're the type of plants which spill over. They're pendant. They're brassavolas actually, and they do enjoy the heat outside in the summertime, but they're just a little bit harder to find a proper place for. So I already did some new setups for my pendant dendrobiums, which I will show you in a second. You should see them on the screen right now. And I really like how it turned out. Practically, I went for a sort of basket, but not really. I'm just copying the idea of a basket and actually still have them potted, but hanging at the same time. If I were to put too many orchids in open baskets, it would become very hard, very fast for me to keep them hydrated. So I had to come up with a devious plan to maintain them hydrated but hanging at the same time. So I'm still keeping them in pots, still in decorative containers, which can hold just a little bit of water, which can be sucked up by the medium, but I'm not actually using the conventional decorative pots. As you might know, conventional decorative pots are not necessarily the ideal choice when it comes to keeping them hanging. First of all, they are pretty heavy, even if they're small. So keeping them hanging needs to imply a secure way of actually doing so. So you might know I do have those plastic hangers, which I don't really trust. Yes, they're pretty sturdy, but they're still plastic. And considering they are outside, they can actually become brittle and break when I least expect it. Let's say during a storm or whenever I am actually under the orchid. So they're pretty dangerous and not incredibly efficient outside. Also, most of them don't have a lip. So if I wanna hang them, I would need to drill a hole or something which could mean that I could use a different hanger, let's say a Vanda one made out of metal, absolutely doable. And I've seen setups like this, but do I really want to sit around and drill holes in my otherwise really beautiful decorative pots? I don't think so. And coming up with a different solution to hang them, again, it's a little bit too tricky. So what about the plastic ones that I have? Well, same story. The decorative ones don't really have a lip. And again, if I want to hang them, I would need to drill them or find a different solution to hang them, which is doable. I could easily find one, but do I really want to complicate my life? No, because there's actually an easier solution. Look at this setup. You will notice that one of these pots actually has a lip. Oh yes, it's the pot inside. The one that is actually used for the orchid. I have a whole bunch of these. But these are actually not decorative pots. They're normal plant pots. The ones that you find in flower shops and garden centers, one of the most affordable ones actually. And they have drainage holes. Luckily, they're not very wide and also we don't have too many holes. And we can easily cover them up to transform this into a sort of decorative pot. So if you guys know my channel already, you might know that I do a lot of things with hot glue. And I already covered drainage holes with other pots with hot glue. And I'm happy to say after one year of use outside, they're still holding. So what I did was I covered the drainage holes with hot glue. Now, because this was on the bottom, I didn't need it to be perfectly beautiful. So if you can notice, these pots have some sort of ridges down the center of the pot. Well, I just put a blob of glue right in the path of this ridge. And I placed enough to actually cover the hole and a little bit of this ridge. I evened it out with the glue gun and it doesn't look tremendously pretty, but you know what? It did the trick. If I put water in these pots, they will not drip. And that is what I want because as I was saying in the summertime, I will make sure to leave just a little bit of water on the bottom of these pots for the medium to absorb. Just a little side note here. This is not something you should do necessarily, but I know my climate and I know that if I don't do this, I need to water my orchids once every two days and I don't have time for that. So keep that in mind. I'm not saying that orchids like to sit in a pool of water. I'm just saying that in my climate, that pool of water will be gone within a few hours. Now, there is another reason why I chose these particular pots, and this is, well, the pots or actually containers that I sometimes use with some orchids. They shrunk, and I'm not joking. This is a container from the very same company in the very same type of set that I got last year. Look at that. It's actually taller. And this is the one that I can find this year. Again, same brand, same packaging. 
and I could swear same price as well, but less plastic. So there we have it, all of a sudden I have some shorter than expected containers here. And this means that they are pretty deep inside a decorative container, but they actually fit in these containers or actually pots very, very well. And here is one such orchid. This is the Brassavola cuculata. It is my absolute favorite type of Brassavola, at least until now. And I think you can see the problem. I can definitely put her on the shelf, but this would mean no light at all coming from this direction and probably some orchids just being crammed and touching it. And really the orchid just wants to go and spill over the pot. Now I did consider the self-watering option, but it was a lot more cumbersome. I don't actually have an elegant and easy solution for it. As I was saying, the pot that holds the orchid is this one. It's not the decorative pot. So if I only use the decorative pot, I am all of a sudden left without a reservoir, practically not achieving anything. So what I decided to do is actually switch the pot to something like this. And being that this will stop being self-watering, I will achieve the same effect by using a combination of Leca, which the circuit already has, and sphagnum moss. So that's what we shall do today. We're gonna repot the circuit into this hanging setup and I'm just gonna go ahead and unpot the orchid. I'm not gonna clean up the root system or anything because Leca is inorganic, doesn't decompose, no need for me to detach it. And I will come back when I'm done. Alrighty, so my orchid is done. No need for hydrogen peroxide or things of the sorts. I've already done this for this orchid. I know she doesn't have snails or anything. I know the medium is actually clean. I just had a few roots that I needed to cut away. So let's get to potting. As you guys know, I do my mixes directly in the pot. I'm gonna put sphagnum moss on the bottom because this is what will absorb. Leca, as wonderful as it is, it's just not that absorbing. Alrighty, let's make a test fit. So unruly, but I do love her. And I think that's quite perfect. With this type of orchid, I'm just going to center it because it is producing new growth from pretty much all directions, maybe except this part. So I could actually put this part closer to the edge and leave more space on the sides, but it is kind of growing from every direction. <laughs> And here is my orchid, topped it off with some bark just to avoid those algae. And there we go. Now I'm going to be using these plastic hangers, which were my former Vanda hangers. I find these ones locally in one of the flower shops here. They're actually not super long. So for these tiny plants, they're just perfect. So I'm going to attach it on this pot. And now I'm realizing that I shouldn't have done that <laughs> because this orchid, is pretty bushy. So first I shall put my orchid inside the pot and then I will attach the hanger. And hey presto, my orchid is done and she looks wonderful. Now before we go ahead and put her outside, just a few words. If you are inspired by this and want to do something similar for outside or for your growth space, you absolutely can just keep in mind your environment and your climate if you're outside. As you could see with mine, I used a lot of sphagnum moss and this is because my climate is super hot. It's also very windy because I live on an island and that helps with evaporation. I need this to keep just a little bit of water there on the bottom because the sphagnum moss will absorb it. And about the sphagnum moss at the bottom, I'm guessing some of you are a little surprised because everybody on the internet puts, I don't know, packing peanuts and all sorts of other stuff on the bottom just to avoid that pool and maybe layering. Well, it just depends on what you want really. If you don't want your orchid to sit in a pool of water, obviously you can put anything you'd like, even Leca, even lava rock, even packing peanuts if you want. Just make sure they're not organic and that will maintain the medium above the pool of water. The roots will go down there. You cannot stop them from growing. Another thing you will do if you opt for a bottom layer like that, you will automatically decrease the size of the pot. Let's think about sphagnum moss, which is a combination that I never do. A bottom layer in sphagnum moss, never. It's absolutely not needed. But if you have a too tall pot, 
and you want to make it shorter but you want to keep the orchid in that pot for whatever reason yes you can opt for a bottom layer because in this way you will fill the bottom of the pot with rocks if you want and only the top part you can have it with sphagnum moss if that's your intention obviously you can go for something like that you can opt for all sorts of combinations but if you want your pot to be super water retentive and wicking sphagnum moss is the way to go no bottom layer no packing peanuts forget them put them in a different box not in your orchid pot because decreasing the actual size of your pot will decrease the water um, retention let's say overall as well so be mindful of your environment and know from the beginning what you want this pot to do in my example i want this pot to hold as much water as possible and to absorb as much water as possible because i'm gonna leave a little bit of water in the pot and there you have it you can actually transform any type of pot into this type of decorative container However, I wouldn't necessarily use it in the house on your favorite furniture because it's a little patch what we did here. If it starts to leak outside on your terrace in the balcony, that might be okay, but on your wooden furniture, definitely not. And even though I do still have pots which have lasted like this for a year, again, it's just a patch. It's not gonna be guaranteed that it will last. So better go for proper decorative containers if you don't want to spoil your furniture or you don't want a pool of water in your home. Definitely though, for the garden or the outside space, you can definitely try something like this. And I hope this inspired you. So with that said, I think it is time to end. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I'm in the process of actually doing some stuff both in the growth space but also outside on the terrace. So I'll keep you up to date with my projects. So you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun orchid subjects. And if you really like my channel and would like to help it grow, do consider visiting the merch store down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!